Hey guys, Ashley with Amari. So a few resources for you guys. We are located in Elizabeth and Highland Park, New Jersey, and I also offer virtual consults. So if you guys need my help, give the office a call, 732-841-0142, and our scheduling coordinator can help you get set up with an appointment. We also have our online shop. So all the products that I talk about in my videos, those are all in our online shop for you guys to purchase. On our Instagram, Amari Healing Arts is our Instagram, all the products are linked right there in our bio. Also, the online shop is linked, and it's linked in the description box for each video. So you guys can go and check those out. And then we have our online course school, the post-op academy. So all of the things that you would need to know post-op, we are doing online courses for. So things like what kind of massages you need, when you need to get them, who to get them from, how to find a therapist like me, all of that we have online courses for. There are going to be more courses coming out all the time. So check in on that to see what's new and what you guys can learn. If you like my videos, all of those courses are exclusive content. All those videos are exclusive content. None of them are on YouTube. They're all in our courses. So that is amarihealingarts.teachable.com. The link for that is also in the description box, and it is also linked in our bio on Instagram. So I hope you guys enjoy the content. Ashley with Amare. I will see you soon. Bye. Hey, guys. It's Ashley with Amare. So you guys have been asking me to do this for a little while. I'm finally getting around to it. So the administrative action letters that the New Jersey Board of Massage put out, right? So there were two people. Um, I posted them on my Instagram as soon as I got, you know, word of it, as soon as the board let me know that they were out. Um, the first person was a cosmetologist, but not a licensed massage therapist. The second person was a cosmetologist and licensed massage therapist. So we're going to go blow by blow with this. I'm going to read you guys the corrective action letters, the consent orders, and I'm going to read you guys our scope of practice and our regulations in New Jersey. And then I'm going to talk about how you find out your regulations in New Jersey, because guys, it is not the easiest thing to find this stuff. And you think they would make it a little easier, but they don't. So when we go, and New Jersey's really good. Um, California, New York, they're, they're also, you can find them if you dig a little bit. Um, but if you go just type in on Google Board of Massage and whatever your state is, you'll find your board and there should be a section on their website that says laws and regulations. Um, in New Jersey, we have a whole PDF thing for it, um, but it's still not clear. You guys are looking for like what modalities are we allowed to practice? Are we not allowed to practice? You're looking for like clear, straight answers. If you are unsure, email or call your board. And my best advice for this is to tell them exactly what the modality is that you are planning on doing. So like, let's say you want to use a machine, right? Because we're not allowed to use machines as massage therapists. And it does say that in our regulations. Um, but we also recently got passed to use uh, ultrasound machines recently. So they're still, that, that took a while to get that passed to be able to use therapeutic ultrasound. Um, not, I'm not talking about like, for, you know, post-op things and stuff like that. I'm just, they allowed ultrasound to get passed to be used. There is a school in New Jersey, New Jersey Massage, that teaches classes on how to use the ultrasound machines. Um, but that's still the regulations on that we're, we're going to need to find out about. Um, but you guys are expecting clear, straight answers, and you're not going to find them when it comes to regulations. If you want clear, straight answers on what you're allowed to practice, massage therapists of the world, what modalities are within your scope of practice, if you're not sure, contact your board, email them. Um, um, AMTA is an organization for massage therapists. They have chapters for every state. So we have a New Jersey chapter. They are also a very good resource to contact. Reach out to them and be like, hey, I'm planning on doing this thing with my hands. Um, describe the thing exactly. So like, I'm planning on using a wooden roller for massage for post-op. Can I do that? And give them as much description as you can to make sure you're very clear on this. Now, here's why I say that. And this is the first thing we're going to jump into. There are a lot of umbrella terms as far as massage, like a lot of umbrella terms. So when we say post-op massage, that's not one modality. That's not one thing. That's not just like, oh, when you hear post-op massage, you know exactly what you're going to get. That's not what that is. So... When we're talking about what we need to be asking, we need to be very, very clear on what it is we're actually doing with our hands. Because even when it comes to lymphatic massage, right? I cannot tell you how many phone calls I get a day where people are like, oh, I need lymphatic massage. 
and where we tell you, Alex will tell you immediately, okay, it's done gently with the hands, no machines, no oils, no rollers, fluid is not going to be leaving your body. And they're like, oh, well, you're not going to drain me. Well, that's not lymphatic massage. That's not what I want. And I'm like, oh boy. Okay. No, that is exactly manual lymphatic drainage, lymphatic massage. You have just been brainwashed by TikTok and Instagram. Okay. All right. And Miami and whoever else that you've been following instead of doing research. Um, it's, again, there are a lot of these umbrella terms, right? So body contouring is another umbrella term. Wood therapy is wood therapy. It's using wood for massage, right? But body contouring could be a machine, could be wood therapy, could be oil massage, could be anything, right? Could be vacuum cupping, it could be anything. Same thing with post-op massage. It could be ice, it could be multiple, multiple things. So when you are trying to figure out, okay, is this within my license or not? Contact your board and ask directly, explain to them the thing you're going to be doing because they have no idea what you're talking about when you say post-op massage. Our board, until I started advocating for this stuff and really talking to them about it, they didn't even know this was a thing, incisional drainage, right? Draining blood and fluid out of people. They had no idea that was a thing. And I, re I remember talking to the um, to one of the people and she was like, they really do that? That's gross. And I'm like, yeah, I know they do. It's a thing. Um, but people are calling it lymphatic massage because I was trying to get them to define in our regulations or give us some sort of concrete answer to say, hey, this is what lymphatic massage should be. This is what manual lymphatic drainage is. It's a gentle pumping motion done to get your body to reabsorb the swelling. It should not be anything else and nothing else is allowed because there is a lot of, again, it's not clear, it's not really gray area, but they don't really give you clear defined lines. So with this first letter I'm going to read, and now all of this is on my Instagram. Both of these um, board letters are on my Instagram for you guys to read. I have screenshots. It's like six or seven screenshots of the, the whole document. So you don't have to go through the disciplinary action page of the New Jersey Board of Massage. Just go to our Instagram and you can like read along. I'm not going to read the full thing because I recorded this video once already reading the full thing and it was an hour and a half for both letters. So I'm just going to read the highlighted parts, right? So on the bottom, the second page of this first letter, it says incisional drainage, right? Defining, because this is what we wanted, defining incisional drainage. Incisional drainage utilizes the practice of massage to force out bodily fluids through surgical incisions. That's not real massage. That's not a thing. And we're going to get into that in a second. The second one is post-surgical massage or post-operative massage is also known as lymphatic drainage massage or manual lymphatic drainage. Lymphatic drainage massage, massage is a gentle form of massage used to relieve painful swelling caused by lymphedema. Now, that is what it's most commonly used for. Lymphedema, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know I mention it a lot. I am going to do a full video on it at some point. But lymphedema is a chronic lifelong condition where you will always have massive amounts of swelling due to lymph node damage so or insult to the lymphatic system. So lymph node removal after cancer. Some people are born without certain lymphatic parts, so lymphedema is primary. Um, it can also be secondary, like a known cause such as lymph node removal. So that's caused by lymphedema. That's what it's commonly used for. The massage moves a patient's lymphatic fluid to their lymph nodes, allowing the patient to expel the lymphatic fluid swelling naturally through a bowel movement or urination. So manual lymphatic drainage or lymphatic massage is post-op massage, is, is one of the post-op massages, right? Because post-op massage, again, could be a bunch of different things. So manual lymphatic drainage, post-op massage, is this gentle skin stretching motion. That's all we're doing is manipulating the skin, not the tissue, not the bones, not the muscles, not rubbing. We're gently manipulating the skin to get your body to reabsorb the swelling so it can be urinated out or processed through a bowel movement. So the swelling is going back into your body. The drainage part of lymphatic drainage is your body naturally draining, just so that we're clear, first of all. So those are the two definitions that we have here. Now, if we go to our actual regulations, right, when it defines, and this is what I encourage you guys to do, if you're not sure what's within your scope of practice, if you are a massage therapist, go look up your regulations and look up the definition of what the massage actually is. Because it says massage and bodywork therapies or massage and bodywork 
means, which is what your license is, right? And what you're allowed to do is massage and bodywork therapy, means system of activating or structured touch offered or provided to the public that includes holding, applying pressure, positioning, and mobilizing soft tissue of the body by manual technique and use, it, and use of visual, kinesthetic, auditory, and palpating skills to assess the body for the purpose of applying therapeutic massage or bodywork principles. Such applications may include the use of therapies such as heliotherapy or hydrotherapy, the use of moist, hot, and cold external applications, so hot stones, ice you know, cold towels, things like that, ice stones, like the ice, the marble ice stones, uh, applications, explaining and describing myofascial movement, so fascia, right, tissue, actual, like, tissue, uh, bah, 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 I lost it, there we are, <laughs> self-care and stress management as it relates to massage and bodywork therapies. Massage and bodywork therapy practices are designed to affect soft tissue of the body, including practices of structured touch of the soft tissue that affect energy fields to the body, reflexology, um, for the purpose of promoting and maintaining the health and well-being of the client. Massage and bodywork therapies do not include the diagnosis of illness, disease, impairment, or disability. So, that statement, anything that is not related to that is not part of your license. So blood, bodily fluid, incisions, drains, uh, needles, syringes, all of those things is not included in your license. So how do we really pick this apart and figure it out, right? So lymphatic massage manipulates the skin. Deep tissue manipulates tissue. Hot stone, right? Same thing, hot, moist, uh, cold, so hot towels, hot stone, cold stones, things like that. Um, what was the other thing? Myofascial movement, so the fascia, the connective tissue, muscles, things like that. Uh, bah, 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 there was one other thing. Oh, energy fields. So Reiki, um, reflexology, all of those things are covered under this license. So this is in the definitions part of our scope of practice, right? Of our of our regulations, I'm sorry, not scope of practice. When we go to our scope of practice, it says the licensee shall practice only those methods of massage and bodywork therapies that the licensee learned during his or her initial training, um, the licensee learned during the course offered by, or a course offered by NCBTMB, NCCAOM, American Massage Therapy Association, AMTA, which I mentioned before, Associated Bodywork and Massage Professionals, ABMP, FSMTB, and then there's like a whole bunch more here, right? So AMA, APTA, a bunch of different boards, right? So continuing education because, and why this is important and why it's in our scope of practice, it is very important because in New Jersey, I know in a lot of other states, it's different in New Jersey. They're saying that you are allowed to practice modalities that are taught by these governing boards. So these governing boards are going to be within teaching things that are within your license that you are allowed to take. A lot of these people doing incisional drainage, drainage massage, handling needles, handling bodily fluids, calling it lymphatics, right? Some of the Brasilia lymphatic courses, a lot of the body contouring and post-op courses, they have no accreditation. You cannot get continuing uh, education hours for them. So what that means is they have not been approved by the American Massage Therapy Association or the Association of Bodywork and Massage Professionals. Because when you go to submit to, let's say, NCBTMB, which is the biggest one, right? When you go to them to submit a course, they have to check your course and make sure that it's falling within massage therapy regulations. They're going to go through it and say, okay, yes, the things that you're teaching are, you know, for massage therapy. They fall under the practice of massage therapy, under the definitions of massage therapy. If you, massage therapists of the world, are looking to get into any kind of swelling, lymphatic drainage thing, you need to be taking courses that are approved by these schools. Because if you are not, you are not allowed to practice those modalities. It does not matter that you took a course that's supposed to be for massage. It doesn't matter that you paid three grand. It doesn't matter what any of that is. It matters that you are allowed to practice it in your state doing what you want to do. Now, I have been in classes for manual lymphatic drainage because I have like five MLD certifications at this point. Um, and they're all on my website. But I've taken them from A. Coles, from Norton, 
from all these different places, right? So I've been in classes with nurses, and this is for the nurses of the world. I've been in classes with nurses where they're taking MLD in New Jersey, but they live in another state. And they are only allowed to practice certain kinds of massage on people, on clients, patients, things like that. Or this specific person was not allowed to practice MLD and do no massage as a nurse unless she had a massage therapy license, which a lot of nurses do need to have to be able to do massage, right? To be able to touch people. Why is that important? Because there are different licenses that allow you to even touch people, right? So the first person had a cosmetology license of these board letters. She didn't have a massage therapy license. She was not allowed to even be touching people. She wasn't even allowed to be putting her hands on people in a massage therapy way, manipulating tissue, doing any of the things that are under that definition I just read. She wasn't allowed to be touching people in that way. The second person was a cosmetologist and a massage therapist. So she was licensed, but she wasn't touching people in the way that her license allowed, in the way that a massage therapy license allowed. This is where the trouble comes in with this, is because you guys will get a massage therapy license and then take these body contouring classes or these post-op classes, but you're not allowed to be touching people in that way, doing those things under your license. That's the problem, which is why I say when you go to reach out to your board to find out, hey, am I allowed to use an ultrasound machine? Don't just say, hey, am I allowed to do cavitation? They don't know what that means. Say, hey, I want to touch people in this way to help with this thing using this machine that does exactly this. Am I allowed to do that with my license? If not, what license do I need to get to be able to do that? Or what license do I need to have in addition to my massage license to be able to do that, right? So that's our professional scope of practice. And that's the definition of massage. Now, when we're talking about, because this is a big thing, I want to address all of these before I get into the letters. A couple of things you guys have asked me about was the body contouring thing, which I addressed, right? So a lot of people have asked me because in the second letter, the cosmetologist and massage therapist who was licensed that got it revoked, it says in there that she was doing the unlicensed practice of um, a couple different things, medical things, professional medical things, as well as violating her massage therapy license by offering body contouring and weight loss. Now, again, remember I said body contouring is an umbrella term. So when we say body contouring, we don't actually know what she was doing that was violating her license, right? They do outline what she was doing that violated all the things and the reason she got her license revoked and fined and all these things and shut down. But again, that's a broad term. So it doesn't necessarily mean you on the interwebs may hear body contouring and think wood therapy. Someone else may hear body contouring and think machines. Now machines are outside of our scope of practice. We are not allowed to be using machines. So that would be in violation of her license, right? So that was one of the things that you guys asked me about is, oh, does this mean that we're not allowed to do body contouring? It's not that you're not allowed to do body contouring. It's that you're not allowed to do modalities that are not covered by your license. So whatever you think body contouring in your head is, I encourage you to ask your board and say, hey, this is the thing I'm actually doing. All right, that's enough I'm going to say about that because I've said a lot about it. Um, the other thing that somebody... <laughs> That I know Kathleen put it up. She's like, oh, they're looking at your social media. What do you think about this? In New Jersey, we have a specific clause in our professional scope of practice about advertising and soliciting. So I'm going to read it to you guys. So it says a licensee may provide information to the public by advertising in print or electronic media pursuant to this section. So then it describes advertising, which is publication. Then it describes electronic media, radio, telephone, television. Then it says print media, newspaper, magazine. Then it says a licensee who engages in the use of advertising that contains the following shall be deemed to be engaging in professional misconduct, which is what both of these people were doing, right? That's what they, that's what they put in their, you know, action letters, um, their consent orders is that it was professional misconduct. We have an actual clause for this. So it says any statement or claim, claim or format, which is false, fraudulent, misleading, or deceptive. That right there is huge because both of these people were claiming to be doing lymphatic massage, which you're going to hear about in a second, lymphatic massage or manual lymphatic drainage. And they were lying 
because what they were doing was cutting people open, squeezing blood out of them, using syringes, using fluid. And we have the definition that post-op massage or lymphatic massage is the gentle manual stimulation of the lymph nodes to get your body to reabsorb the swelling to be urinated out. That is the biggest thing with both of these is it's the professional and false misleading deceptive advertising all of that because you guys as the client are trusting us to do our job and we are telling you what our job is and both of these people were telling you the exact opposite just to make money and they were doing things that they're not allowed to be doing touching people in ways that they're not allowed to be touch touching them in their license and this is where a lot of the problem comes in with these umbrella terms right manual lymphatic drainage lymphatic drainage lymphatic massage is not an umbrella term it is a medical modality it is a defined thing post-op massage is an umbrella term so when they're doing post-op massage on Instagram saying it's lymphatic massage or lymphatic drainage or drainage lymphatico as a lot of people are putting it out there or Brazilian lymphatics, whatever it is, whatever they're naming it. And they're showing a picture of a needle and a syringe and squeezing blood out and all of these things that directly violates their license because it is our job as a massage therapist having a license in New Jersey to follow these rules. And they have these rules for that reason. So the client is safe and we are safe. So any promotion or professional service for which the licensee has not received education. And that education has to be offered and approved by NCBTMB, NCCAOM, American Massage Therapy Association, AMTA, Associated Body Work and Massage Professionals, ABMP, all the things I named before. So it has to be an accredited education that you can then be providing to clients and advertising. You cannot be advertising something like post-op massage and you took a course that wasn't accredited and not even something you're allowed to be doing or touching people in a way under your license. So that's where a lot of that comes in. Um, there is a part in here, just give me a second, let me see if I could find it, where they do talk about uh, using a TENS unit and machines that are not allowed do, 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 and I've lost it and I don't think I can find it again but we do have a part in here um, that says we're not allowed to use tens units and ah there it is okay so notwithstanding any training received as permitted by a above which I already said licensee shall not perform sexual massage we're gonna skip that animal therapies prohibited by veterinary medicine any application of electrical current to the body. So here's your cavitation. Here's your radio frequency. It's this transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, tens, machines, and diagnosis of illnesses, diseases, impairments, or disabilities, which we already said before. So there is a part in here that says we are not allowed to use machines. Um, and again, people will be offering it, putting it out on Instagram violating their license it's really important that you guys go through your regulations and if your regulations are not clear like again that machine part was in professional the uh, professional practice it's at the very bottom of our scope of practice so it's in our scope of practice it is there but they're not laying it out for you saying okay you are not allowed to do ultrasound radio frequency cavitation now why is that why are they not laying it out because as the field develops of massage, there are different techniques, different modalities, different things that are coming about, right? Like body contouring, wood therapy, vacuum cupping, all these different things. So these rules and regulations are set up this way so that you understand the idea and the concept of what you're allowed to be practicing. Anything that doesn't fall within that is not generally allowed, but that doesn't mean you can't ask. Like I said, the ultrasound thing just got passed, I'm still not clear on the regulations. I haven't looked into it that much and I haven't taken my ultrasound class yet just because I want to check it, check it out. Not that I'm going to be offering it, um, but I am going to be checking it out just to see, right? Maybe I will offer it if I find benefit to it. But again, that's not, that didn't change, right? In our regulations, that wasn't updated. Maybe it will be in the future. But moving on from this, now that we've defined all these things, right? We're going to read these letters. What I want to say before jumping into this is just because these disciplinary action, final consent order, administrative action letters came out from the board, 
that does not mean they're going to go into our regulations and put in a specific clause saying lymphatic drainage massage is specifically this and post-op massage is specifically that and incisional drainage is not allowed. They're not going to change our regulations and put that in there. They're not going to update all of that stuff because if you look at what our scope of practice already is, if it's not included in our scope of practice, we're not allowed to be doing it. That's it. So am I allowed to be telling people that, oh, you have a swollen lymph node, um, you should go, you know, and and like maybe you've got an infection or something. You should, you know, go take antibiotics or take some vitamin C because you have an infection. No, I don't have x-ray vision. I don't have that training. I cannot test for test for that. So I don't know if you have an infection. What I can say is, hmm, as a lymphatic specialist, I noticed this side is a little bit more swollen. Have you seen a doctor? Have you seen a medical professional? Have you gotten a diagnosis? How long has it been like this? Have you checked on it? And then go down that that whole, you know, little rabbit hole with you guys of, okay, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it could be, but you do need to go get this looked at. There is a part in here in our regulations really quick because this also pertains to it as far as record keeping and soap notes that say exactly what we are supposed to be putting in our soap notes. So um, the record keeping section of this licensees shall make permanent entries to client records which shall accurately reflect the massage and body work services rendered. So it's an intake record, the date of the service, reason for visit, including physician's prescription if there is one, name of licensee who provided the service, and the licensee practicing at the office, modalities used, the area of focus, and a referral to another healthcare professional. Again, we're not allowed to diagnose. We can point you in the right direction, but we don't have the knowledge to do that. And keeping these records is a legal thing. You are legally supposed to be keeping these records. One, and I've had this happen with so many people, right? People get into, especially because I do lymphatic drainage, a lot of my clients will um, submit to insurance, right? To get reimbursed because in New Jersey, as a massage therapist, we're not allowed to submit to insurance. So, We can, you know, you can go get reimbursed. If you have a script, we can do tax exempt um, sessions because you have a script, but we can't go be submitting to the insurance ourselves. Insurance generally does not cover what we do. So you guys go for reimbursement. Sometimes they need a copy of our notes. All of that needs to be in there because it helps your chance of getting your reimbursement and your coverage, especially if you do have a script and your doctor said that you needed MLD for your swollen lymph nodes, right? So there's that. But also, let's say, and again, this is this is where this happened. Let's say you're fighting the insurance, right? And let's say you wind up trying to go into like a court battle with them. I've had so many times where the law firm will reach out to me to subpoena the notes for the client, the the medical records for the client showing what happened. That stuff is super important. You guys for post-op, something a little more relevant. For post-op, let's say I notice that your swelling increased. You have more swelling. And it's not just from the garment. It's not just from anything else. Let's say that I notice it's red and hot to the touch. Let's say that I tell you to go see your surgeon and things like that, right? Let's say the surgeon did something wrong and you need proof. Those notes are proof. It is extremely important that the person you are going to is keeping soap notes and keeping records. One, because we're legally bound to and it outlines exactly what we need to put in there and two because it helps you guys someone who is not medically inclined will not understand the importance of that someone who has not taken a clt course or an mld course but has taken just a post-op massage course that isn't getting that heavy background as far as the medical part of it like the importance of it and the body systems and all of that won't be doing that to this degree. And we have proof of that in these letters. So we're going to jump into these letters. We'll start with the first person. Um, Consent order, administrative action. This was June 23rd. So this is, you know, the one that was unlicensed massage therapy. So this person has exceeded the scope of her cosmetology license and was engaging in the unlicensed practice of massage and medicine, massage therapy and medicine. 
practice of medicine. Specifically, it was alleged that the respondent was performing incisional drainage by opening incisions, squeezing, squeezing fluid out through the incisions and utilizing syringes to suck blood and fluid out of clients. Respondent is a licensed cosmetologist hairstylist. Respondent reported that in addition to offering cosmetology services, she also offered post-surgical massages. Now, again, that's an umbrella term, right? So post-surgical massage or post-operative massage is also known as lymphatic drainage massage. We read that whole, that whole little paragraph. Here's the thing. We're going to, I'm going to pause in between each point, right? The person said they were offering post-surgical massages, right? Manual lymphatic drainage for post-op. That does not mean they were actually doing the hands-on MLD. So just keep that in mind, right? Just because it says post-op massage or that they were doing lymphatic drainage doesn't mean they were actually doing the real hands-on gentle moving of the skin, right? So respondent admitted that she had been performing post-surgical massages for the past three to five years. Respondent denied being a licensed massage and bodywork therapist. So this person is a cosmetologist massaging people. That's the first issue. The second issue is they're claiming to do post-surgery massage, but they're squeezing blood and fluid out of people. And we now know that post-surgical massage or post-op MLD is manual lymphatic drainage, gentle pumping motion. Respondent advised that she sometimes utilized ultrasound. Ooh, red flag, right? We just read our regulations. We're not allowed to be using machines as a massage therapist. So even if she was a massage therapist, violating her license when performing the post-surgical massage. Respondent denied performing incisional drainage and, adver and advised that she only performed manual manipulation. And manual manipulation, guys, means, again, because it was said when we were reading the description of massage, manually manipulating with the hands, manually manipulating the tissue. So any form of manual with the hands manipulating. So manual lymphatic drainage, manipulating the skin to get the lymphatic system to drain back into the body because you're going to hear that manual manipulation thing a lot. So she said she was doing manual manipulation, which could sometimes cause draining of fluid through operational incisions, operational meaning that they aren't closed. Respondent advised that the fluid would either drain into a bag or flow onto a disposal pad. However, contrary to the statements made by respondent, photographs found on respondent's social media website advertised her performing incisional drainage on patients. The photographs also showed respondent utilizing an ultrasound, radio frequency, and cavitation machines, several, and performing cavitation services. Now, let's pause here for a second. Remember that whole misrepresentation clause, that advertising piece in there? Yeah, that's why this is super important because you have to be honest about what you're doing to clients because it is very public and you are tricking and misleading people and that's not okay. You're tricking and misleading them by saying that you're doing lymphatic drainage when clearly you're marketing and you're advertising and you are telling, outright telling people. You're trying to lie to the board, but you're outright telling people and promoting that, hey, I do incisional drainage. I will drain you. Come, let me drain you. Come, let me pull out your drains. Let me cut open your incisions. Oh, they're, they're still open? Okay, cool. Let me push the blood and fluid out of them. One, you're not licensed to be touching people at all. Two, that is direct, direct violation of your scope of practice because you are lying about your advertising. And three, that is not lymphatic drainage. And four, you're not allowed to be touching people medically. You're not allowed to be touching drains and things like that. So multiple services which the respondent provides provided constitutes the practice of medicine and massage and body work therapy and or exceeds the scope of respondent's cosmetology license. These services include performing lymphatic drainage massage, so an incisional drainage, as it says. So let's say she was actually doing true hands-on MLD, she'd still get her license taken away, or she'd still get fined because she doesn't have a license to be touching people. But she wasn't doing actual lymphatic drainage. She was squeezing blood out of people doing incisional drainage. And utilizing ultrasound, radio frequency, and cavitation machines. Again, we're not allowed to be using machines. Further, respondent allowed an unlicensed individual to perform cosmetology services. So the part that I skipped over just because it's too long to read, um, the person had people employed and she told them <laughs> that they were just like front desk girls and cleaning workers and stuff. But when they came in to do the actual check, there was someone in the room employed that was unlicensed, had zero license at all, no 
licensed cosmetology, massage, nothing, and was doing waxing on people. Um, so that's what that part was. So misrepresentation of the scope of her license and or misrepresentation of who would be performing services to constitute the violation of board regulations and professional misconduct in violation of all of the clauses that I read before in our regulations. Respondents advertising and provision of services, including medical treatments as described above, constitutes the unlicensed practice of medicine. Respondents provision of post-surgical massage and advertising for said services as described above con constitutes the unlicensed practice of massage therapy and massage and body work therapy in violation of all of the things that I read to you before. It's got all of the numbers on here. So that was the first person, right? So anyone... Who tells you post-op massage or lymphatic drainage massage involves blood and fluid leaving your body? One, has no idea what manual lymphatic drainage is because that is not how the body works. And two, is misrepresenting their scope of practice. And three, may not even be a licensed massage therapist because that is not what we are taught in school. One, two, if you take an actual lymphatic drainage course, that is absolutely not what's taught. And three, again, with the regulations, goes completely against the whole advertising thing. So just, you know, again, one more time to hammer it into your head. Lymphatic drainage does not involve blood or fluid leaving your body. Cool? Cool. Okay. Um, and lots of form of post-op massage that you guys do, like machines and things like that, not allowed under your scope of practice. Some states are different. So check your state. But in New Jersey, New York, and California, that's a no-go. So the second person was a licensed cosmetologist, and he, her license number's on there, and licensed massage therapist. Respondent is not a licensed physician. Um, we're going to go down. Okay. In examination rooms, investigators found needles, syringes, lancets, lidocaine, and prilocaine creams, as well as microblading equipment, among other items. Respondent denied having an employer registration to operate massage, a massage business. Unlicensed employees present that day acknowledged performing lymphatic drainage massage. All right. So here we go. Um, first of all, in New Jersey, again, regulations and such. To have a business as a massage therapist, one, you need to be a licensed massage therapist. Two, your business has to be registered with the Board of Massage. Three, to have employees, you have to then register to get another license to have employees. Four, you got to be registered in your town to be operating a business. Five, you have to get a CO for the town saying that the building that you're in allows massage therapy. And six, you have to pay a licensing fee, not just a shop fee, but a licensing fee to the township on top of the fee that you're paying to have a business there, on top of the fee for the CO, on top of the board of massages fee to own a massage practice, on top of the board of massages fee to have employees. There's a lot we got to pay for just to stay open, guys. So people who are already starting to like blur the lines as far as what they're doing in their practice, there's a common theme here. Unlicensed employees... Um, unlicensed shops, both of them were unlicensed with the Board of Massage. Uh, I actually know the first one. She wasn't registered with the town either, and I don't think the second one was. I'm not sure, though. But the first person that I read you, to you guys about, not registered with the township at all. Township had, had no idea she was there. Um, but again, once we start like seeing all these little red flags, the big ones are not far behind. So... Again, unlicensed employees present that day acknowledge performing lymphatic drainage massage. Um, here's the thing. When we are talking about the whole misrepresentation thing with our advertising clause, this is why it's super important. Because you're fresh out of surgery or you're swollen or you're whatever, right? Even if you're going to get a regular massage done. You don't know who's putting your hands, their hands on you. You guys know me. My face is all over the place. You walk in the room and you're like, oh my God, it's you. And I'm like, oh my God, hi, it's me. Hi. <laughs> um, you guys know because it's, it's everywhere, right? And this is why we have that misrepresentation clause because you, this person, could be a licensed massage therapist, but when you walk in the room, it could be somebody totally different. It's like when you guys go to get surgery and you schedule with one surgeon, but the day of surgery, they switch your surgeon on you and you're like, what the hell? 
this isn't the surgeon I wanted. This, this isn't who was supposed to be touching me. What's going on? So with that, it's a different case. But with this, they are directly lying to you, saying that it's going to be one thing and then it turns out to be another thing. Now, it's different if we have employees with their license numbers posted and you know, and we tell you over the phone, and you know who you're booking with, and it's it's all well and dandy, and everything's in a clear, straight line. But if it's not clear, if you get a whiff of, hmm, this doesn't seem right, I encourage you to start looking, because it may not be. Because again, common denominator between these two people that are doing the unlicensed massage and doing the medical practices that they're not allowed to be doing is the unlicensed shop and the unlicensed employees and not even registered to have employees doing all of these things that they know nothing about. They just showed these people what to do and called it a day. So be careful. All right. So they found all these things, needles, syringes, lidocaine, prilocaine. Okay. So respondent has been providing body contouring services. Again, guys, umbrella term. We don't actually know what that means, and this doesn't state it either. Weight loss, which again, we don't know what that means, along with post-surgical and lymphatic massages and saw between 5 to 15 clients per day. Respondent indicated that approximately 50% of her clients were post-surgical patients who had undergone cosmetic procedures abroad. She added that she performs lymphatic drainage massage on those clients and in doing so, explained that fluid sometimes drains out of her incisions. Let's pause here. That's also a common denominator. If you ever post-op, go somewhere, and they tell you, oh, yeah, sometimes fluid falls out. No, 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 no. I see people 48 hours post-op where their incisions are still opened and they are covered by a gauze. When we are taught to do MLD, manual lymphatic drainage, this is not for post-surgery. It's used for post-surgery, but as we read before, it's, it's primarily used for lymphedema. They have weeping wounds. They have lymphorrhea, which is where... The fluid, clear fluid, is just leaking out of their skin. We are not touching that compromised skin. Why? Because it's a skin game. We want to move the skin. If there's a hole and it's compromised, we're not going to be moving that skin. We're not going to be touching that. We're going to be working elsewhere to get the body to suck the fluid out of that area so that thing stops leaking, right? So we're not trying to work in that area or do anything that's going to cause things to be coming out of you at all. So anyone, again, another big red flag, anyone who tells you, oh yeah, during your post-op massage, you may leak a little bit or take a Tylenol because it may be painful. You're going to be really sore. Absolutely not. They are not trained in actual manual lymphatic drainage. They are trained in what all of these letters are saying, which is lymphatic massage, post-op massage, all of those air quotey things. That is not how that works. I know you guys love that catchphrase when I say that. That is not how that works, like at all in the body, not how that works. We have an entire map of the lymphatic system showing you how your body drains. Not anywhere on this map is there an incision where fluid's going to come out of your body, ever. If fluid is leaking out of your body, we have a problem. Considering your lymphatic system is functioning 24-7, constantly moving fluid and draining fluid, if fluid starts leaking out, we got a big issue. It's not supposed to be doing that, even after surgery. With the 48 hours, when you guys have your drains, right, your incisions are still open. When you are expressing fluid from there, your body's naturally expressing that fluid, right? We are not expressing that fluid at all. I don't care if the surgeon tells you to go get it done. If it is not a medical person aspirating you with a needle, if it is not a medical person in the office doing those things at your surgeon's office, do not let anyone do that to you. You do not need to let anyone do that to you because we have science that proves otherwise that that is not how the body is going to work when it comes to swelling. So the common theme here is that they keep saying that the fluid sometimes leaks out. No. I do MLD with you guys 48 hours after lipo. You have a gauze or something covering your incisions. When we're done, that gauze is not soaked to the brim with fluid. Fluid doesn't just come leaking out. Here's a good example. You have a pimple, right? You pop the pimple. There's a little bit of white fluid that comes out, and then it crusts over and it's done. If you, throughout the day, you're just moving or whatever, going through your normal life, your body is not just leaking fluid. 
if you go to scrub your face and you're doing this and you rip the scab, or if you have some sort of like a little opening and you're doing this, bringing blood and fluid to the area, then things will fall out because there's a hole for it to fall out of. Your body does not just leak fluid on its own. Ever. It shouldn't be doing that. That's not... No. Okay, we're done with that. Just saying. Little side rant there. Okay. Um, respondent advised that all clients treated by her were treated in the capacity as a licensed massage and bodywork therapist. Respondent denied maintaining any records or notes for her massage and bodywork therapy practice. Respondent also denied being familiar with the statutes and regulation governing her profession because, again, guys, it is legally required that we keep soap notes. So, respondent initially denied, again, another one, denied using syringes, needles, lidocaine, prilocaine creams observed during the inspection, but acknowledged that a photograph posted on her Instagram page shows her holding a syringe and inserting it into a client's abdomen to extract fluid. Ew. Respondent stated that she learned how to use a syringe during a phlebotomy class at Trinitas Regional Medical Center in 1997, but noted that she did not complete the course. Ooh, okay. She estimated having used, used syringes on three or four patients, but acknowledged having testified that 50% of her clients came to her for fluid draining following cosmetic procedures. Take a pause there. Guys. Just because someone takes a course, again, going back to what we read before our regulations, just because someone takes a course does not mean they are licensed or allowed to practice said thing. First of all, she didn't complete the training. Just because someone says that they got trained in a thing, unless they have letters after their name or credentials like CLT, MLDC, LMT, whatever the letters are for the certification, unless they have that actual certification, that's, you're not allowed to practice that just because you learned something, just because even, okay, even with manual lymphatic drainage, if you take a four hour continuing ed, you may be able to do the manual lymphatic drainage technique on people now because you've been trained in it, but that does not mean you're going to be working with chronic lymphedema clients or cancer clients or things like that because you're not trained as a decongestive therapist you're not trained to be dealing with anything medical. You are only trained to be doing manual lymphatic drainage, the one sequence that you know, on healthy, viable bodies, and that's it. You have no deeper training. You can't be working with deeper problems like that. So she was trained in this. Oh, my goodness. She was trained in this, but she never completed the training, first of all. Second of all, she has no license to be practicing this. You have to be a nurse to be using sharps. So if you are a nurse, that's a different story. She's not a nurse. So that's where the whole performing medical practices that we're about to read comes in. Multiple services which respondent advise constitutes the practice of medicine and or exceeds the scope of respondents' cosmetology and massage and bodywork licenses. So she estimated using syringes on three to four patients, but acknowledged having testified that 50% of her clients came to her for fluid draining following cosmetic procedures. Guys, stop asking to be drained you don't know what you're asking for this is for my massage therapists of the world when a client calls you and they've been to miami because we get at least six or seven of these a day they have no clue what they need their surgeon has told them nothing their surgeon didn't tell them what manual lymphatic drainage is their surgeon didn't tell them about swelling and how to deal with it their surgeon told them nothing they have no idea what they need. So when they call you and they're like, oh, do you do lymphatic massage? And you say yes, again, umbrella term, you're thinking hands-on gentle MLD. They're thinking draining fluid, which is why when anybody asks that, the first thing out of Alex's mouth is, yes, we offer gentle hands-on manual lymphatic drainage. It's a skin pumping motion that dilates the vessels to get your body to reabsorb the swelling and pee it out. There are no lotions, rollers, machines, nothing like that being used during your massage except the hands stretching the skin. That is all. Because they don't know what they're asking for. So you need to explain it to them and be very clear about that. And then you guys as clients... You don't know what you're asking for. You think manual lymphatic drainage is just what it is just what you've had. And that's why you say it didn't work because it's syringes, it's needles, it's draining fluid because people are making up these things rather than go on Google and type in 
what is manual lymphatic drainage, you're looking at YouTube, TikTok, Facebook groups, all this craziness and getting all this misinformation. And it's not even misinformation. It's just people, again, like this person who is taking these clients because that's what you guys are asking for. So she's doing these things outside of her scope of practice because that's what you guys are asking her to do. So she's doing it, right? So one Therapists, make sure you're very clear when your clients are asking you to do something because the last thing you want is them getting in the room and being mad that you didn't stick a needle in them because they will get mad at you. And two, clients, make sure you understand what you're asking for because if you go in there and the therapist is doing this, they are directly violating their license. It is not legal in New York, New Jersey, and California, definitely, as far as I know, and a bunch of other states, I'm sure. Um... I don't know all the states, but I know those three, it's definitely not allowed. So make sure that when you are looking for something, you are not asking someone to do something that is not legal. Make sure that you understand what you're asking for. Multiple services which respondent advertise constitutes the practice of medicine and exceeds the scope of practice. These services include micropigmentation, facial fillers, vampire facials, ear candling, chemical peels, teeth whitening, and laser hair removal in violation of all the letters and numbers. Although respondent represented that a physician with whom she shared an office space with performed the vampire facials and administered the facial fillers, she admit she admitted that neither the physician's name nor credentials appeared anywhere on the advertising material and that the physician did not contribute financially towards the advertising nor share in fees with her. Thus, respondent's advertising misrepresented the scope of her licenses, authority, and or who would be performing these services. Again, that misrepresentation clause, right? Misrepresenting the scope of practice, super important because this person is not trained to be doing any of this. If you have ever seen what someone looks like after a chemical peel, you know it can go really wrong. If you are going to a place for two things. One, if you are going to a place for a chemical peel, you wanna make sure you're going to a dermatologist's office. Just a side note. And two, even though they say there's a physician in practice, that doesn't mean the physician's gonna be the one touching you. Do you know how many freaking times I hear people say, oh yeah, we have a nurse on staff, but sometimes, and actually, there is a picture of this. On my Instagram, I took screenshots of the conversation that one of my clients had with these people. Um, oh yeah, we have a nurse on staff who can pull your drain and you know cut out your stitches. And I said, okay, ask her who, you, who, who you're gonna go to. And she was like, okay, well, who exactly will be doing it? Oh, well, sometimes our massage therapist can do it if our nurses or physicians are busy. What? What? The massage therapist is not licensed to do that? No, they, they should not be touching you. Absolutely not. Just because there is a nurse or doctor on staff does not mean that person is the one who's going to be doing the things to you as far as touching you the way they're supposed to medically. So that's exactly what was happening here. She wasn't, it wasn't even on staff. She just shared an office with someone. Um, and that person happened to be a physician and she decided she was going to do teeth whitening, which first of all, go to a dentist for that. Um, ear candling, first of all, go to a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist for that. Chemical peels, go to a dermatologist for that. Like these lines should not be bleeding. So another one of your red flags and at the end of this video, I'll sum up all your red flags. Another one of the red flags is if this place is offering all these different things that are supposed to be off offered in different settings. We should not be going there. Absolutely not. Us at Amare, me, Ashley with Amare, I only do manual lymphatic drainage. I, we have never offered spa treatments, ever. We've never offered deep tissue. We've never offered Swedish massage. We have offered, and this is just me specifically, medical massage, myofascial release, trigger point therapy, neuromuscular therapy, very, 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 very rarely, very selectively, and that is not something you can just go and book online. We only offer manual lymphatic drainage. That is what we specialize in. The same way a dentist will send you to an orthodontist. Um, the same way that a primary care physician will send you to a gynecologist. There are certain licenses that are only allowed to be doing certain things because you are only trained in certain things. So if this person is offering all of these different things, it's a hair salon with a massage place in the back, you need to be really careful. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying you need to be really careful that the person who's actually touching you is licensed to do so. So further, respondent providing 
of body contouring and weight loss services. Her practices of providing lymphatic massage and utilization of syringes demonstrates that respondent practice outside of her scope of her license as a massage and bodywork therapist, as defined in a whole bunch of violating numbers of NJSA 4, 5, 11, 5. You can look up all of that, all the things that she violated. Um, the whole thing is on my Instagram. So what are we taking away from both of these things? One, please understand that these are just disciplinary action letters. These are just making people aware. Yes, it is a big thing because it does give us a clear defined answer that no, lymphatic drainage does not involve fluid leaving your body. And no, incisional drainage is not massage. Otherwise, it would be covered under our massage license. It is not allowed. It is the practice of medicine. Incisional drainage, draining fluid out of your body is the practice of medicine, not massage. And using machines, not allowed. Both of these people, as you can see, also we went over it in our scope of practice. Machines are not allowed. Electrical current into the body is not allowed. Also, these people one had a license, one didn't even have a license to be touching people. The person who had a license was touching people in the wrong way. So one wasn't allowed to be touching people and the other person was touching people in the way she wasn't supposed to be touching them. Um, and again, when we're looking at our scope of practice, when we're looking at the regulations, it is not very clear. So we need to make sure that we are contacting AMTA and asking questions if you are unsure, if you're allowed to be using cavitation machines. You need to be contacting your board directly if you are unsure, if you are allowed to be doing ice massage, things like that. You need to ask directly because those umbrella terms will trip you up. Like it said, she was offering body contouring and weight loss. But in that letter, they didn't put the little thing at the bottom defining what body contouring and weight loss was, right? Just like with ultrasound, they haven't updated our scope of practice as far as what we're allowed to offer ultrasound because it says no right now in there. But I go to the board meetings every month. I do keep abreast on all of these things, especially the post-op stuff. I do talk to the board about it. I do talk to AMTA about it. I do advocate about it because it's important to me that you guys understand what you're asking for. Because let me tell you, these people wouldn't exist if they weren't making money. They would have no choice but to exist. But you guys keep asking to be drained. You come back from Miami and that's what you hear and you're asking to be drained. One last thing and then I am wrapping up this video because we are approaching an hour. I understand that even in New Jersey, there are surgeons that are seeking people to do incisional drainage. I understand that your surgeon may have told you you need to go get drained or told you go take a pill before your lymphatic massage because it's going to hurt or sent you to someone who uses machines and is directly violating their license. The surgeons have no idea. Guys, they are not educated on any of this stuff. And trust me, I'm working hard on that too, especially here in New Jersey, to educate them. Because you guys start out not knowing what you need. And then you find things on Instagram and TikTok and you're like, oh my God, that looks terrifying. Do I really need to do that? You ask your surgeon, that's all they've seen and that's all they know. And then all they see is other people's results afterwards. So they think it works. They don't realize that it's illegal for massage therapists to be doing that. And they're looking for people to do it. And then they're finding the illegal people and then they're sending them clients. And then you, the client, are getting this done. And one, it's not legal. Two, it's dangerous. Three, you can catch an infection. And four, it's not going to be manual lymphatic drainage it's not going to work on your lymphatic system at all so I understand that there is still the disconnect with the surgeons as far as understanding what manual lymphatic drainage is there are a lot of them that I am aware of in New Jersey and New York and everywhere that are sending people to go get this done but you are the client you have the power you can advocate for yourself you do not need to have fluid drained out of your body to heal. And that's actually the opposite. It disrupts the healing process. You do not need to get blood and fluid squeezed out of you. And it is not legal in New Jersey for a massage therapist to be doing that. If your surgeon wants to aspirate you, if your surgeon wants to take fluid out of you, that is a different story. But as far as you going to get that done, you don't need to do that. Now I understand. A lot of people say, oh, well, incisional drainage does this. Incisional drainage takes the pressure down and incisional drainage is a good thing. Okay, if that is your school of thought, that is okay. 
but I don't want you to feel like you're forced to go get it done. If you are making a conscious decision to get this done, that is different. But if you don't know any better, if you are a client thinking, oh, I have to get this done and it's so painful and it's uncomfortable and I hate my life because of it, you don't have to do that. There is a better way. There is a more medically inclined way and it's the actual manual lymphatic drainage that you should be getting, the hands-on gentle technique you should be getting. That is what's designed medically to get the swelling to be reabsorbed so you pee it out. And again, guys, if you want to get the incisional drainage, if that's the route you're going to take because that's what your surgeon said and you're sticking by that, if that's what you really truly believe is going to give you the best results, then go ahead and do that. And that's fine. But please just know that if you wind up with massive fibrosis or if you wind up with more swelling and you are eight months out still in a faha, you can always still go look for the gentle stuff. You can always still go look for Vodder style MLD and fix what happened. You can still do that. It still works. It's not a one and done. You can still get that done at any point. It works for all swelling. And you have a right to tell your surgeon that you don't want to get those things done. I had a client, really quick, short story, who came to me pre-op and her surgeon's in New Jersey and wanted to send her to someone doing the illegal squeeze drainage thing. And she met me first and knew, oh no, that's illegal. I'm not doing that. That's not legal for a massage therapist to be doing. And that's also not how swelling works because I've been watching Ashley's videos and I took Ashley's course and I know how this works. So she told him she didn't feel comfortable doing that because it was gonna be painful and she didn't want to. And he told her, well, then I don't feel comfortable doing the surgery on you and canceled her surgery. And it is his right as a surgeon, if she doesn't wanna follow his protocol to do that, but it is also her right as a client to not get something dangerous done to her body just because she wants to get something good done, which is surgery. And then they're forcing her to do something bad afterwards and she can't go to who she wants to go to. That's also not okay. Please take a second look at the aftercare protocol with your surgeon, please. And if there is something in there that you do not like, you have every right to question it because that may not be the surgeon for you because the last thing you want is to get a great surgery, but it heal terribly wrong and your healing be the thing you regret and then you regret the entire surgery because I see it happen all the time and you guys wind up in my office crying. So let's wrap this up in a nice little bow. I'm not wearing my bow today. Let's wrap this up in a nice little bow. Incisional drainage is not legal for massage therapists to do, as we've seen from both of these corrective action letters. Draining fluid out of clients, anyone who is saying that when they do lymphatic massage, fluid just comes pouring out of the clients through manual manipulation, is manually pushing fluid out of an incision site, which is not manual lymphatic drainage and not legal for a massage therapist to be doing. That is the practice of medicine. Three, Handling syringes, sharps, needles, lidocaine, prilocaine, all of these different things like this person was doing in this letter, that is also outside of the scope of practice for a massage therapist and not legal to be doing. Handling needles or anything like that or pulling drains or handling stitches or anything like that at all. Four. Four. Post-op massage does not involve blood or fluid ever leaving your body. Ever. And now, as we see in New Jersey, the definition of lymphatic drainage massage, post-op manual lymphatic drainage, is a gentle pumping motion done to the skin to dilate the lymph vessels, getting your body to reabsorb the fluid to be eliminated through a bowel movement or urination. Lymphatic massage is most commonly used for clients with lymphedema. It has nothing to do with fluid leaving your body. It has nothing to do with oils. It has nothing to do with machines, which are not allowed in New Jersey. It has nothing to do with any of the craziness. It is simply hands on skin, just resting there, manually manipulating and stretching and moving the skin. That is it. We are gently moving the skin. That is all manual lymphatic drainage is. It is not touching anything deeper and involves no fluid leaving your body. So those are the letters from New Jersey. Again, it doesn't need to be spelled out in our statutes and regulations because our statutes and regulations define what massage is. Our statutes and regulation define that you are not allowed to misrepresent your scope of practice through your Instagram, through your TikTok, through your YouTube, through whatever. You are not allowed to, one, 
be promoting false things. So things that are not like misnaming things, right? So the nomenclatures, the names for things. You cannot be saying that something is manual lymphatic drainage if it is not the true manual lymphatic drainage hands-on. That is a direct violation of your license. That goes for anything. You cannot be using machines except the ultrasound, which we'll get to later. That's something you guys can research on your own if you'd like, if you don't have time to wait for me to research it. You cannot be using needles or sharps or medical things. Those are all the practice of medicine. If it is not outlined in your definition of massage therapy, in your regulations, or in your scope of practice, or in your professional and business practice section, in your regulations, email and contact your board because it may not be within your scope of practice. And just because you take a course to do something does not mean it's an accredited course, nor does it mean that you are allowed to use the information in that course. Even if it's accredited, it doesn't mean that that accrediting board is approved under your license. So make sure you look at that. So the common things that I got asked about all of this, um, are we not allowed to do body contouring anymore? It's not about that. It's about what you're doing under that body contouring umbrella. Um, <laughs> are they looking at your Instagram all the time and judging you and tracking you? No. But if you are directly telling people that you are doing MLD and you are lying to them and you are doing incisional drainage, which is not only a lie, it is directly violating your license, yeah, they are going to look at you. So that's a thing because we do have a clause about it. Um, and three, please stop asking people to squeeze blood and fluid out of you guys. Please, please. Stop asking people to drain you. That is not how it works at all. Draining blood and fluid out of people, unless you are a doctor or a medically inclined person, a nurse, something that is an actual medical certification, is not legal for anyone to be doing except that person. The same way that no one else but a dentist is going to work on your teeth, no one else but a doctor should be handling your blood and bodily fluids or a medically inclined person. Um, massage therapists should be doing massage not handling blood and fluid. That's not something we were trained in school under a preliminary training to do. So guys, that is all the things about that. Uh, this video is an hour and four minutes long. If you need foams to help get rid of your fibrosis, lipofoams, Amare lipofoams, not all foams are created equal. If you need medical grade li lipofoams, um, Amare Post Op Shop. The link is down there in the description box. It's also on our Instagram. Um, if you need help with massages, guys, if you are preparing for surgery, if you have had drainage massage and something's still not right, if you, if your doctor is telling you you need to get the drainage massage done and you're like, okay, but why isn't that right? Because that's the biggest thing. If your surgeon is telling you you need to get radio frequency cavitation, all these things, all these massagey things, I encourage you to take our course. It's 150 right now. It's on sale. Um, it's about four to five hours. And I explain to you the science of swelling and the science of manual lymphatic drainage and how it works to get your body to reabsorb the swelling and you pee it out and why that's the massage you need after surgery why and what you should be looking for when we're looking for manual lymphatic drainage, what they should be doing to your body, when you should be going in, how many do you need, why do you even need how many you need. All of those things are included in the course, um, as well as how to find your therapist. There's also um, a PDF guide that you can download that goes along with that. That link is also in our bio. If you already know what manual lymphatic drainage is, but you're having trouble finding a therapist, the Vetting Your Therapist Guide. I have links on there to directories from schools that train MLD therapists. So you know the person that you're getting your work done from is trained hands-on from an actual school that's accredited. Um, for them to be touching you and practicing this so they know what they're doing. So the Vetting Your Therapist Guide with the clickable links and the questions to ask before you even book so that you know in your head that they know what they're talking about and they know what they're doing and they're actually doing manual lymphatic drainage and not squeezing blood out fluid out of you, that's also a link in our bio. Um, we will put the link in the description box for the website for both of those. It's Amare Post Op Academy um, and Amare Post Op Shop is where you guys can get your supplies. But... That course, if you guys are like, but I really thought they needed to drain me. Like, I really, really think this is what I need. Like, my surgeon's telling me this is what I need. Why wouldn't this be what I need? I don't understand. Take the course, you'll understand. Because it's got all the science to back it up. And it, ex it explains, I explain everything in there as far as what the swelling is, how it goes back into the body. Because now I'm not the only one telling you guys this. I've been fighting 
for years telling you guys squeeze massage is illegal. Squeeze massage is not manual lymphatic drainage. Squeeze massage will cause fibrosis. Squeeze massage will cause complications and infections and is not okay and really painful. You don't need to be doing that. It's really painful for no reason. You don't need to be doing that. It'll save you so much grief. I swear to you, you don't need to be in any more pain. So go take the course. Go understand so you can present it to your surgeon and be like, look, I know the science of the lymphatic system. I know what lymphatic massage is. Some surgeons don't even believe in it because they don't know what it is. Some surgeons tell you not to get it because they think it's the squeeze massage stuff and it'll mess you up. Or they think it's the machines and it'll mess you up. So they don't even know. So you guys have to educate yourselves. Um, but take the course, check that out, get your guides, vet your therapist, find somebody. If you don't find somebody, you need help, you have no idea what's going on, you're preparing for surgery and don't want to get the squeeze massage and it's a hot mess or your surgeon's not giving you any directions, call the office. You can set up a virtual with me, 732-841-0142. Or if you've had surgery and squeeze massage and you're all like, oh my God, I don't know what to do now because I got squeeze massage and now I'm all messed up or I need to find somebody, but there's nobody in my area. What do I do about my swelling? Virtual. Um, but if you're in New Jersey and you are looking for a therapist, I got you, boo. Um, I'm in Highland Park and Elizabeth, New Jersey. You guys can book with me. We'll get you set up with all your supplies. I will explain all of this again in session. <laughs> I talk a lot in my sessions. <laughs> you guys get all the information. Um, but we're in Highland Park and Elizabeth, New Jersey, and I can help you guys after surgery. So if you want to see me, schedule a virtual or an in-person, 732-841-0142. And that wraps it up, guys. Anytime the board puts out anything like this, anytime I get wind that there is a public notice coming out, I will do a video. I will put it on my Instagram just like last time. And I will go over everything just like I did this time. So keep a check out on my Instagram. Um, because anytime any of this stuff changes, I let you guys know because it's really important. It's important for you to understand that what I've been saying for so long is not just things that I'm saying. It's actually real. It's actually the way that it is. It's, this is not how it's supposed to be. Um, and again, it's important to keep abreast on what's going on with post-op massage, with all the craziness that you're seeing on the internet, with, with everything, everything, everything. So guys, Ashley with Amare. I'm so sorry. It's been an hour and 10 minutes. And if you've stuck it out to the end, you must really like to hear the sound of my voice because I'm sick of hearing myself talk at this point. So Ashley with Amare, I will see you guys soon. Um, I hope this was helpful. Go on my Instagram, check out the posts if you want to read the full thing for both letters. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.